Hey guys, one welcome to you. Right, so one of you day traders out there, you've probably been in this situation, especially recently with a lot of kind of news flow coming out. But if for years this has been happening, uh, depending on what the engine of the market is and what's actually driving the market and making people fearful or wanting to take on risk or not, you're in a market, whatever the market may be, and all of a sudden the market just suddenly spikes to the upside. Okay, now it's not scheduled economic data, it's not scheduled news, there's nothing that you can see has been out, it's just literally spiked up. So, what do you do? So the first things first, guys, is you do not dive into something straight away. I'm gonna kind of qualify this in a moment, but this is my rule is that I, before, years ago, I'd dive onto stuff like this, either shorting it or buying it, thinking it's a great opportunity and getting caught out. Even if you're waiting for literally a few minutes, that is giving you time to have clarity and thought and decide what to do. So there's two things that's happened here. One is it's just a fat finger and nothing's happened, it's gonna rotate back. The second thing is it's some sort of news that could cause a significant move. Okay, so if it's point one, the last thing you wanna be doing is buying there, of course. If it's point two, you want to be buying, but you want to make sure that it is that and not just a fat finger. So the thing to do, or thing that I do guys, and the first thing that I do is I wait, right? So I wait because even if I have to wait for three minutes, say I'm intraday trading, three minutes and I have to buy even higher, at least I know that there's something that has repriced the market. So I wait, maybe I check Twitter to see if some sort of news has come out because that's normally quite good for kind of up-to-date news. And if I see something, I can wait for the first pause. If it's something that's a genuine repriced scenario that for whatever reason may be, I can wait and still have to be aware of using my setups and skills to get in. I don't want to be chasing stuff because in reality, if I buy this, this thing could still pull back half of that before it kind of dawns on everybody else that this is needs to be repriced up here. So even if you're correct, it's the same with all trades, you've got to be able to still manage the risk and quantify the risk. So that's why I'm going to wait for a flag or a pause. And if it's a genuine reprice scenario, guys, it may well shoot up, but it will pause. It will put a red candle. It will do something that allows you to quantify the risk and then play for a breakout of that you know, genuine kind of repriced scenario might well do this. Then you can buy as it breaks through here and have a stop there, just treat it like a normal trade. If it's not, if it's not a repriced scenario, then again, you're gonna wait because if it starts to come back and starts to come back down here, you may well miss it, right? You may well miss it. If it comes up and comes back down again, if it's that much of a fat finger reprice, uh, not reprice, should I say, if it's a fat finger, i.e. just someone's putting in some, some orders, it's come up and it's gonna spike down, you're probably gonna miss it and you have to accept that. But if it starts, to do this and come back down again, then there might be a chunk of trade again to take on the mean reversion side of it. You know, you might be able to take something uh, literally as it comes down and pulls back that way. But I don't like to do that. I like to see what happens because most of the time, if you're trading a thick market in normal market conditions, you're not gonna have a fat finger. What generally would happen is that it's a fat finger based on news. So what do I mean by that? So in other words, if you're in the middle of the night and you're trading oil futures or something, yeah, a fat finger can occur like this, i.e. someone pacing an order they didn't mean to do, it caused the price to spike. If you're trading intraday in these thick products, a fat finger isn't one generally, we do have it from time to time, but generally it's not gonna be you know, just one person making a mistake with an order. It's gonna be an algo spike of a liquidity vacuum that may then reverse, and this is where we, we're waiting, because we wanna see what happens. Normally, this is news driven, something has caused this. And if it's a repriced scenario as in positive, you get that pause and drive up. If it's something that's actually negative, but some people have interpreted it differently, the algos have kind of jumped in on it too quick, then you often get a trade in the opposite direction, which is again why it was so important to wait. Because you could have this, it could spike down again, and it could start to bite plummet through lows. Then you've got a beautiful opportunity on the short side because you've waited. And again, what you're looking for would be some kind of setup that you normally do, but within that scenario. So you've seen it spike up, it's come back down. By now you've waited, you've found out if there's anything coming out from news to have caused this. You don't have to be an economist, you just know that there is a catalyst. If there's some kind of catalyst that people are you know, talking about on Twitter, on the news thing, then you know that there's a catalyst. That's all you need to know. 
Uh, if the price response to that catalyst was initially bullish, and now it's looking like it's bearish and holding lower, you've got a short trade, game on the short side, you can press the short, because you've seen that the buy side has been rejected, you can play on the short side. Now, is it always gonna be profitable? Of course not, that's why you have to manage the risk. When you've waited and you've decided how you're gonna operate, please also remember to look at the risk. Where's the risk, where's the risk, where's the risk? Too many times you can go in, you get all excited and seduced by the volatility, thinking there's some quick opportunity here, I'm right on the front line, I'm seeing the market move, I can make some money. Think about your risk, guys. Always keep in mind, I don't want to lose money. How can I restrict myself from losing money on this? So, keeping a sensible size position, thinking about definitely where your stops are. And this will test your discipline as well, because very often you'll see it coming down, maybe it spikes back up, and you have to be iron disciplined in getting out of it, because let's say you chase that, let's say you bought this and it reversed, and it was a bit late to reverse, you need to take your medicine, so to speak, quickly. Bang, take it, get rid of it, refresh it. The last thing you wanna be doing, I speak from experience, guys, I've done this a couple of times before in my career, where I've been playing this, trying to be clever, trying to buy, thinking I'm gonna get a massive move. It reverses, you're not quick enough to exit. Before you know you're sitting on a catastrophic, well not catastrophic, but heavy loss, and you're kind of there, deer in headlights, what do I do? You end up kind of cutting the trade out at the worst possible position. Whereas if you're in, you stopped out, reassess, reassess, reassess. You know, the important thing guys, guys is just patience. Because even if it's a genuine reprice, the up or downside, even if it's 15 minutes later, 30 minutes later, there's still gonna be a good setup. So even if this is too quick for you and too like I don't wanna get involved in it, perfectly fine. Don't get involved in it. Have a rule that says, right, when I see some kind of reprice or significant move, I'll wait 15 minutes. Just have that rule, bang, timer starts. Right, what's happened? What are the levels? Can I see if there's any catalyst for this? What do I wanna do? Do I line long, I line short? How does that line up with how am I, my prior thesis? What are my levels? What I'm looking for? Where would be my stop? And then you've got the time to run through the trade because you're gonna get an opportunity if you get a sudden spike up. And if it turns out to be just, I say, a fat finger that goes up and comes down, you missed it, so what? It's, it's one of thousands of opportunities that you don't have to worry about. Better to stay safe and be clinical about your execution than be wild and just be trigger happy and end up getting caught out on something stupid just because you wanted to trade on a whim, just because you saw volatility and it sucks you in and you got involved in it. All right, guys, the market spikes for no reason. What do you do? That's my take on it. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you deal with a market spike if you're intraday trading? Do you ignore it? Do you jump on it? Do you kind of wait? Do you always fade them? Let me know. Take care. Bye-bye.